Yo, what are you up to? Uh, I'm actually just about to jump on a call. With who? I'm interviewing Lily Singh. Ooh, can I help? No. Why? Because it's gonna be weird if you're here too. Well, can I watch? I guess. Hi, Lily, it's so nice to meet Tell you. Hi, it's Tell so weird to hi, see too. you in person not and have it not be like a YouTube video that I'm watching of yours. Yeah, I mean, in, in, as in person as we can get these days. <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about with you is, because I write comedy, you've written comedy for years and years and years. Good start. She's going to think you're a loser. Sorry, Lily, just one second. Yeah, no, it's fine. I need you to be quiet. I need you to shut up. I need you to be silent. Is there someone else there with you? Uh, no, no, all, all good. I want to know about your process because I have my own sketch comedy writing process. It's a little haphazard. It's a little all over the place. What do you, what do, you do when you're creating a sketch? What's the vibe? I'm kind of the same. I'm a hot mess. And anytime someone asks me this question, I'm like, oh, I have to sound smart here and tell them that I have this whole process. But I honestly really don't. I have this notes app on my phone that I just will yeah. take kernels of ideas or full yeah. ideas if I'm watching a movie. So I'm that annoying person that in the middle of a conversation or during a movie or during a show, I'm like, wait, pause, stop, great sketch idea, and I write it down. And then from there, I just kind of attack it from every angle I can. And when I land on one that excites me, mostly because I like the characters associated with the idea, mm -hmm. um, I just, I kind of expand. I, I go very um, train of thought. You know, I don't have format. I just... I go through it like four or five times. I will perform it out loud first to see if I like the way it sounds, if I think the comedy's hitting. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then I go from there and I turn it into scenes. And I only start to learn how to actually write a script script. I don't think I've ever said this. The only reason I learned how to write an actual script yeah. was when I got the chance to collab with Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Ask her if she's ever rubbed his head. I'm not gonna ask that. <sighs> You're no fun. Do you have like when you look back, because uh, you've got a lot of years on YouTube, do you have a sketch that you look at and with your knowledge now go, gosh, I wish I would have done that differently? <clears throat> oh yeah, so many. <laughs> okay, so, this is like most, the whole library of them? It's all a learning journey, isn't you know, it? You know, Julie, I'm gonna give you all the exclusives here. I'm gonna talk about only things I've never talked about before because I like you and I enjoy you. This is right. another story I've never told anyone. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there was a collab idea that has been my dream collab. And a lot of people don't know that I actually did it, but I never released it. Because Ooh, I, with I, who? I hated the way it turned out. <gasps> so, I'll shout out to YouTube, I love YouTube. I know, I know they're cooking this up, but YouTube Space, back in the day in LA, you know, they had the spaces. They had Loved this it. 360 camera set situation. And it was like, you know, when the audience member could like see all 360, and it was supposed to be. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but I know it's like a cool tech that some people are into. So I always had this idea to remake one of my favorite songs, which is Backstreet's Back with the Backstreet Boys, right? Great. So Excellent. we had the haunted house set. We had all of the costumes. I had all of the dancers. I, I got AJ from the Backstreet Boys. I got Lance from NSYNC. Hey, I got all these pieces Lance to like make this sketch. Lance watching right now. No. He may be We shot it for three days. And I kept telling them during the shoot, I was like, I want to make sure we're getting the shots that I have in mind, but they're like, oh, because of 360 camera, it would be this far away and all. Ultimately, when I saw it, it was just not what I envisioned. Everyone was so <gasps> far away from the camera, you couldn't even yeah. tell who anyone was. And I was like, this is, I just can't, this is a brain baby of mine that's too precious. So I actually never released it, even though all wow. the pieces were there. And I just wish I had trusted my gut and been like, no, this shouldn't be a 360 video. It should shouldn't be, be 360. The, what I know. It shouldn't be, this is not the video to experiment this brand new thing that I, so that still burns me till this. Wow. Oh my God. I even the got, production. I paid to use the song. I paid, we paid, and we paid to use the song as well. I'm so sad for you. I'm sad, but also I was proud of myself because I was like, oh, you actually really care you about know. your art. You care about yeah. your art enough to say no, even though this is everything I wanted because it wasn't executed the way I wanted. Oh my yeah. God, she should redo How the video. How crazy is that? I mean, tell her redo the video and we could be in it. You have the bravery ask her, ask her to have it. Sorry, Lily, just one more second. Everything okay? Yep. What did I say? She could put us in the video with AJ and Lance. Ask her, ask her. I'm not gonna ask that, you know why? Why? Because it's a stupid question. How is that a stupid question? That is an excellent question. Just let me handle it. Fine, I'm gonna grab a snack. I feel like that's a really great segue talking about your book. Yay! Yay! For I know those of you that are watching here. right now, this camera angle right here, you're on a tripod of 15 of my old books. 
But the, but there's the new one. Oh, you have it too. Yeah, of oh, course yes. I have. Are you kidding? Thank Look at I mean, I read it. Out to I mean, I read it. Ultimate sign of preparation. Yeah. Well, it, Lily, it was it was really good. I have always known you through a screen, so I know you as the constant hustler, the the person that's always happy go lucky, the person that I would watch to be like. Yes, I need motivation. I wasn't prepared for you to show so much behind the curtain and to be so vulnerable. And I really want to thank you for that because I just think it's cool to see that you're human and that there were things that you struggled with on your journey. And I think that, yeah, I think it's important for fans, viewers, and even even people who don't even know you to read and, and feel inspired. What was the impetus to writing it? I mean, well, first of all, thank you for saying that. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to share a part of myself that I probably am not able to share on video and rants because it's, it is vulnerable and I feel like it is easier to write in the safety of a book. Um, yeah. There's a lot of reasons I wrote this book. I mean, in a lot of interviews, people have asked me this and I've said, you know, the pandemic was really rough. I think it was rough for everyone. Sure. It was a chance for us yeah. to, not a chance, we were forced to look at ourselves and our lives. But I think really it's that, um, if I'm being real with you, I, my life has been a little overwhelming and I think a lot of people can relate to this whether or not they're in this industry, you know. I was, I never went to school for this job. I made a video, it mm -hmm. snowballed to a few videos, it snowballed into a brand, into this career, into this industry, into moving away from my family and I think throughout all of it, I, although I do consider myself a very excited and happy person and that is genuinely who I am I have struggled a lot with just reining in all the emotions that are associated with my career things yes. that no one else in my family's experienced things that yeah. I don't even know how to deal with I don't know how to even think about and so I've always struggled with like where is this place in my mind this safe space that I can go to when I'm dealing with this overwhelming ride that I'm on. And I've always struggled with that. And I think mm -hmm. in my first book and in early in my career was very like, quotes on the wall, graphic t-shirts. Like it was, it was a lot of, let me surround myself with color and happiness to make sure that my mind is always right. But as I've grown up, I've realized that that work really needs to be done deeper. I, I yeah. wanted to create a safe space in my mind that I could return home to no matter what happens in my life. Because I realized I hated being this person that, oh, my video got millions of views, now I'm in a good mood. Oh, my, my people are being mean to me on the internet, now I'm like questioning yeah. every part of my being. Like to fluctuate so much every day is so exhausting. And I thought, if I could disassociate myself or really have a place in my mind where I know who I am, this all would become a lot easier. And I did that work through this book, I tried to. I felt that too. Like, I mean, first off, nobody knows what it is to be a, a YouTube or an online personality except other online personalities. I mean, and this is not to, like, it sounds so complaining, but people do forget that, like, I'm a writer, I'm a, I'm a entertainer and an actor, and I, and I run a business, and I put myself out there constantly. Like, it, it is, yes. it uses all facets of who you are, and the thing that I struggle with is, like, and you mentioned in the book, it's like this workaholicism where my identity and self-worth is directly tied into... Uh, the success. But yeah, I, I just, I, I thought that was really interesting, that whole bit about needing to have a relationship with yourself. Yeah. And, and not having those distractions. Yeah, and I think another thing, like, like, listen, I think when I wrote this book, I'm just gonna be real with you, a lot of people were like, why are you, you're not a life coach, like, why are you writing this book, telling yeah. us? And the reason yeah. is, and I don't want to come across at all as if I am a life coach, just people who have trained years and years to give people that information. What I feel I am an expert in is, um, having is being the first in a lot of things in my family, mm -hmm. in my life, in my community. Um, mm -hmm. I've been the first, whether it was with late night, whether it was with YouTube for a lot of things. And it has forced me to learn very unique lessons because of that amount of right. pressure, because of being in that situation. So that is what I'm offering it in this book. It's how to disassociate from those labels and titles and all the things you think you're supposed to live up to. And that's not to be confused with oh, don't be ambitious. A lot of people are like, oh, so does that mean you're not gonna hustle hard? Does that mean you're not gonna be ambitious? Absolutely not. I'm still, I was at set until midnight last night shooting. I'm still working really hard. But yeah. the difference is, I don't think I am all of those things. I understand mm -hmm. that I am a complete human being. That makes YouTube videos. That shoots on a show. That was a late night yeah. host. I am not the late night host, like I am a complete human already. I think that's what's exactly. really dangerous yeah. about creators is that because there's no HR and there's no person, 
we make our identity our views and our identity our content and i just think it's a really it's a really tricky place to be it can be super toxic for sure but i like what you said there was another bit in the book that i really liked where you you said in order to give your best you have to be your best self you say and i love that because i do think that so many artists think they have to be struggling or they have to be uh, you know, star starving artists, struggling artists in order to create compelling work. But the fact of the matter is, if you want longevity in this career, you have to be a healthy whole person. You have to have a network that is supportive, a community, an identity separate from your work. Yep. And and then you create your best sketches. Then you create, you know, your best. I also feel like monologues and there's something to be said about when you are having fun, you create the best things. But you cannot totally. be having fun if you have sucked the fun out of things because you were so run down. And so, yeah. so I, I again go back to like, I'm not suggesting that every single day now you need to take out three hours to meditate and now you need to tell your boss you can't do something because work-life balance. Let's be real. That's yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of people don't have that privilege. However, what I am saying is that make sure your energy check is balanced. I'm not going to yeah. have time every day to be like, let me check in on myself. I'm not gonna have that Let me, me recenter myself. But come the end of July, there is gonna be a week yeah. or two where I'm like, ah, bah, 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 bah. I'm now gonna rebalance yeah. the checkbook. I am going to do self care. I'm saying that's important, at least yeah. considering yeah. that there's ebbs and flows and that we can have that type of balance. Doesn't need to be every single day. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. encourage us to think that way because creators don't do that. They'll just go, 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 go until the end of time. Checks and balances, get, gain some perspective. Um, on the topic of you shooting a show, though, uh, I, th I, I, I love your career, first off. I love your career path. I love that it's self-taught, that it goes from YouTube. I feel like it really mirrors kind of what I did. Like, I really, really struggled to get in the acting industry, so I started the YouTube channel um, just as a way to hone my skills, really. And then it turned into a thing that got me acting jobs. Yeah. Um, and of course, you've now been on, you know, you've been on Dollface and you had your own late night show and now you're on Candles Got Tap. Um, what, is, what is it like going from YouTube to television? What are your preferences? What are the differences? Oscar for likes being on TV. I literally just did. How's that supposed to know? I just got here. So I, there's, there's, for me, there's things I like and there's things I don't like. The things mm -hmm. I definitely do not like um, and why I love YouTube is that you can completely be con in control of your creative vision. Is there is, there's so much red tape when you're shooting for TV and movie. That everything takes so long. Everything takes so long. Um, it has to go through legal, it has to go through S&P, it has to go through the head. There's like so many cooks in the kitchen where yeah. Yeah. If you think something is really funny, by the time it goes through all the people it needs to go through, it has been beaten and broken and watered down and turned into something totally different. Yeah. Um, so that's why I love YouTube. I also do love, I, I believe YouTube is a perfect place to tell those quick kind of like relatable stories that don't need to be so expensive and take so much yeah. time. Yeah. Having yeah. said that, the thing I love about uh, TV and film so far in my experience is that and I'm, when I say this, I'm not talking about the late night show. I'm talking about scripted stuff like Dollface okay. and the Muppet okay. Show I'm on right now. Is they really, really um, have the resources and have the time and have the desire to make things of like immense quality that are so beyond what I could ever do on YouTube. Absolutely. So it's like we're shooting with the I'm shooting with the Muppets right now. It's like the quality's through the roof. The shots are getting are incredible. The technology they're using is amazing. And I'm like, it is really cool to be on a set where there is a hundred people that are all working on this task and we're all dedicated to this shot, this one shot in this one episode to be really cool. It's it's fun. It's a challenge and it's fun. And I'm the amount I learn is just crazy. I feel like I'm constantly a student on set. So there's definitely things I like and don't like, and that's why yeah, I dabble yeah. in both. Yeah, I, I felt the same. So I was on, uh, I'm currently starring in uh, Run the Burbs on CBC. Oh, and awesome. I was I was in the writer's room. And that was really interesting because I've really only ever written by myself. So to have the collaboration aspect, I was like, dude, God, people are so good. Yes. And, and then to have like different people behind the camera and to have costume people, like surrounding yourself by really talented people professionals is inspiring and takes like the work off of me you know I also to, to add on to that I feel like we're soulmates to add on to that the one thing so on YouTube even as my team grow, grew larger and I think even 
people, if you're watching this and you have like a, so many people on your team and you actually have a big production for YouTube, I still think there's that pressure as the person whose channel it is to be like, I need to be in every part of this. I need to know yeah. what that line is. I need to know what the edit's gonna be. You're involved in every part, but there's something so nice for me to go onto set and say, my job is yeah, to be this yeah, character yeah. and say these lines. I don't need to worry about the marketing. I no, I, it's no. so hard for me to turn it off because even still to Disney, I'm like, hey, what about for social media? And I'm like, it's not, not your job. You don't, you don't need to do no. that. You just need to say these lines. And there is something That's my really favorite nice about part. I know being able to turn off all of those other things and be like, I can actually focus on performing this one thing is really nice. Exactly. Oh my God. It's, it is my favorite thing to walk on, a, on set and go, not my problem. Like yeah. oh, hair, not my problem. a hair will no, be out of place. Yeah. And I go, that's not Someone's my problem. complaining over there. Oh, Godspeed to whoever has to deal with that. It's not my, not my problem. Not my problem. Yeah. I love it so much. Um, okay, I, I know that you're busy and you've got other ones of these to do. So I want to do a really quick, because we're both from Toronto. I want to do a really quick yes. Toronto rapid fire questions. Do it. Hit me. My favorite subject. Just, just your gut response too. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hit me. Okay. Uh, Jays versus Raptors. Raptors go through and through. No question. No debate. Kensington versus Queen West. I feel like me and my friends chilled more at Kensington, to be honest. Ask so. her how tall she is. I'm not gonna ask her how tall she is. Why? Because you can Google it. But she's right there. Wait, what did she say? Nothing. Best subway station. <laughs> Best is an interesting word. I'll take the one where I always lied to my mom and met up with my boyfriend would be at Scarborough Town Center. Ayy. Scarborough Town Center was where I thrived. If I yeah. ever skipped class, I was going to Scarborough Town Center to do what? Nothing. To, A lot of to shit sit down. in the food court, to eat one <laughs> fries. That's what I did. I was like, forget this class. I'm rather going to sit in this food court to do nothing. That's I all. love that. I've never been to that station, and now I'm going to go for that it's reason. A it's a scene. Uh, okay, which is worse, the 401 or the Queen Streetcar? In my life, I'm going to say the 401. I can't, but more than anything, let's be real, it's the DVP. I can't. I simply cannot. Really? The DVP, yes, coming from where my parents live, going anywhere, the DVP was the bane of my existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty toxic. Uh, High Park or Trinity Bellwoods? Probably Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. More of a slackline vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Slackline, drum circle. Mm -hmm, exactly, um, exactly. Mike Myers or Jim Carrey? Jim Carrey. I'm um, Jim Carrey. I quote Jim Carrey at least once a week. At least okay. once a week, I am on set being like, "It's a spicy meatball." I just for no reason. I I love him. I think he's perfection. Jim Carrey. Great. Mike Myers for me. So okay, okay. We'll arm wrestle. Like all right, all right. Which is worse, people who say all the T's in Toronto, Toronto. Or when raccoons get in your compost bin. If you live in Toronto and you say Toronto, I don't trust you. I don't trust anything about you. I'm gonna have to say that is the worst for me. And I always know if someone comes up and goes, oh my God, yeah, I'm from Toronto too. I'm like, no, you're not. You're not. I know right now that you're no, not. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. So I'm saying you're an imposter. Raccoons, I want authentic Torontonians. Yep, I feel that so hard. Okay, and then last question, milk in a bag. Thoughts? It, it makes perfect <laughs> sense. I, this is, ever since I moved to LA, people make fun of me about this. It makes, so, people here, the recycling is full. It's full to the brim. Why? Because they have a million cartons. Idiots, idiots. But I'm just going to say, the bag, I'm a, I'm a fan of the bag. I love that. Well, this is a Toronto the... ride or die and Toronto can do no wrong to me. And so no. I will, at every game, I will be wearing my Raptors jersey and I will be dying on that hill. Proud Canadian, proud Torontonian. Oh my God, I just want Scotty Barnes to be my nephew. <laughs> I just He's want him so to be beautiful my best friend. Too. Yeah. So beautiful. Absolutely. Um, Lily, this has been wonderful. Of course, yeah. Best of luck to all of you. Need anything else? I'll let you go. Thank you. Bye bye. Now we're never going to know how tall she is. You are the worst. You are absolutely the worst. I just, I literally just got here. Do you want chip? Here, I'm going to throw it in your mouth. Open. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. It was a little bit different. Thank you to Lily Singh for being a part of it. Make sure you go over to her channel and give her some love. This is her new book, Be a Triangle. Uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I read it all the way through in like a weekend. So highly recommend it. And also uh, I have a Patreon, which I think you should sign up for. It's a great way to see behind the scenes stuff, get updates, get a chance to chat with me. And it's a great little community and I think you should check it out. Okay, I love you, bye.